Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be needing to prepare a little bit, a little, a little bit for our combat that is upcoming. So we will be creating some functions and functionality uh, supporting that first before we can really delve into discussing uh, how and why we approach combat and uh, the combat logic and how we deal with that essentially. So starting off, we want to download some assets. Going to our Epic Marketplace and going to the free, permanently free collection tab. We can scroll down and see that we have, if we expand this a little bit further, we can see that we have an asset here, which is fine for us to make use of, which is this free fantasy weapon sample pack. So make sure to add this to your project and then we'll continue from there. With that added to our project, we now see that we have this weapon pack folder, which has some blueprints in it, apparently. Uh, I don't know, god rays, who knows. Uh, we also have some meshes for our weapons, which would be static meshes, and we also have some skeletal meshes for our different weapons. So uh, this is what we want to have, essentially. And from here, we will be creating uh, a weapon base blueprint. So we, let's create a new folder. So we have it organized with all these weapons. Inside of here, we can make a new blueprint of the type actor. We'll call it CP underscore weapon. Inside of this one, we want to have uh, one weapon just as a showcase essentially. So we'll just go here to our uh, skeletal meshes Let's find a sword because I'm particular to swords. Let's close down everything except this weapon tab. And let's add a skeletal mesh because this was a skeletal mesh. Since we have it marked in the content browser, it will suggest itself here immediately. So this is what it looks like. Now, something to keep in mind, and we'll change the name from SK sword to BSK weapon because this is the base class it should be generic and um, something to keep in mind now is that this will serve as your base for all other weapons meaning that whatever rotation and placement you have here needs to be uniformly done with all the other weapons so if we were to later on add for example this mace Let's add this here so we can see it side by side. You can see that the mace is pointing in a different direction than the sword, meaning that if, if I had the sword like this be the base and then used that to orient how we hold our weapon on our character, when we then later on add a mace, since it has 180 degrees of difference in uh, rotation when it comes to the uh, let's see, this would be the the red, the x-axis. Then that would mean that the mace would be going in the complete opposite direction than the sword would. And that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So looking at these objects, we can see that for the most part, they seem to be looking upwards. The only outlier here is the the sword one. So it might actually be more prudent for us to use the hammer as the the base because it's placed properly and then if we want to add the sword later on we can see how uh, how we would have to change it for it to look proper okay so let's actually do this we'll remove the we'll put drag the mace to be attached to the root and then we'll remove the weapon one actually this was a very roundabout way doing this uh, we just wanted to have this essentially. So weapon is going to be like this. So we have now say, said that upwards orientation is what we want to have our weapon in when it comes to any of the weapons. And we want the center to be where we would be holding the weapon because that will also be necessary when it comes to adding new weapons later on in on our character. So I hope uh, that made sense. 
it will become very apparent when we add when we add the sword later on, I think. Um, anyway, so yeah, so now we have our weapon base class essentially. Now we need to have the the character be able to actually hold a weapon. So how do we do this? Well, we go to our uh, first of all our third person character, and we need to find the mesh. The reason we find we go for the mesh is because we want to have access to its skeleton, which we get over here, and. From here we want to be able to add a socket to our hand so we can hold the weapon there. So we will find, we can click over here and we can see hand R. I accidentally managed to hit it directly at once, but hand R is essentially what you want to find. Then you want to right click on it and add a socket. We can call this socket uh, right hand weapon socket or something of that case or nature so it's very clear what it does in addition to that we want to right click on it and we want to add a preview asset let's make sure to get the maze because that's what we're using as our default and we didn't change how the maze was looking in the blueprint which means that this will translate one to one of how it would look like if we added the weapon so we'll change the orientation here or not the orientation we changed it to be a translation instead and we'll just move the mace a little bit so it looks like it's being held in the hand. Like so, that looks good enough, I think, for me. And now we have the right hand socket here placed in a location where this would be. So if we were to add the sword now without doing any changes, that means that it would be pointing downwards, which is not what we want. But we'll get back to that later on. For now, this is good. <clears throat> we just close and uh, go back to our third person character. Our third person character, we now, now we now put in some functionality here. Let's say we want to have this weapon spawned. So we can spawn an actor uh, from us, and we can say we want it to be of the type um, BP weapon, right? And the spawn transform, we split this, and then we say we want to add it to our socket. So we can, for now we can just do this, I guess. We, we need to have our mesh and we can attach, we will be cleaning this up a little bit later, but uh, attach actor to components uh, because the the weapon is an actor and the mesh is a component um, like so and the weapon we want to attach is this one and the socket name we want to make use of actually we should have saved so let's open up our skeleton again uh, this should be the fastest way i guess uh, let's find our socket it's called right hand socket right hand weapon socket we copy the name and then we go back to our character and we input this as the socket name. <clears throat> we make sure that it snaps the target for all these different drop boxes and make sure that it welds the simulated body so it keeps, keeps itself there. So if now we start playing the game, you can see that we start off with a mace in our hand, which is fine, right? Now how this would be handled when it comes to the sword, we can just show that off a little bit quickly we go to weapons we create a child we we'll call this bp underscore sword and instead of the hammer we will make sure to get the sword which is this one so we'll hook that one up in here and we know that the orientation now here is wrong but we know that the placement for the handle is right so we'll say orientation, let's say 180 along X, like so. So now since we have translated it in here, if we're going to go to our third person character now and change from weapon base to... Uh, I, did I call it the BP sword maybe? Like so. You can see that the sword is, is being held fine in the character. So the rotations would be have to handled in the children blueprints for it to be correct and that's where you will be doing the changes to make sure that it's aligning with all the different weapons that you have i hope that makes sense now that we see that working let's just clean it up a little bit and create uh, an event or something for this to handle 
uh, this functionality. So we'll create a, cust create a custom event. We'll call it uh, equip weapon. Weapon. And what we want to send into this is going to be a class. We're going to be choosing BP weapon and we're going to have the class reference. So choose to name it uh, weapon class or something like that. So now we can send in a weapon class to this function and it should be able to equip for us uh, the weapon, right? So we'll take our spawn weapon over here and it's important that it is um, of the weapon base class type here in case because if we add functionality that we expose and spawn then it will be shown here uh, in in this spawn actor so uh, all all the things that are inherently uh, common between in the base class is what we will get in the spawn actor here uh, in addition to this we may want to keep track of the weapon that we are actually equipping so let's promote this to a variable uh, let's call this one uh, equipped weapon let's say in case we need to have it at a later point uh, we'll disconnect it like so and hook it up like so so now we have the equipped weapon here and since it could theoretically be that we have uh, different characters with different skeletons um, that have uh, essentially different skeletons which means that they might not have the same socket that we created what we can do is we can um, do this we can say um, mm, 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 mm. actually i'm not entirely certain about how to do this you know what? Let's actually undo this. Let's hook this up again so that we automatically spawn it with it for now. We'll remove our equip weapon, remove our uh, variable we created over here, and remove it over here from equip weapons, and then hook this up again. I believe it is going to be nicer if we place this in a component later on. So I think we will be doing that. Uh, yeah, I think that makes more sense. So let's do this and we'll do BP weapon. So for now, we will just be spawning in with, uh, which is going to be essentially our hammer then like so. And, and that, that will be fine for now, I think. Uh, so, so we will be getting back to this and cleaning this up a little bit later. But for now, this is where it will be, be staying. Um, anyway, I think this might be a good place to stop for now. I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.